Okay. Well, good, good afternoon. I, I wanted to uh, first start, and, the, and one of the reasons I wanted to come here was uh, I was a childhood fan, uh, and still a fan, of Sesame Street. And uh, I just wanted to say that the King of Apes is my favorite thing that was ever on Sesame Street. Uh, the Count is my favorite character, and the song We've Got to Count It Higher by Chris and the Alphabets is my favorite song. Okay. <laughs> I, abs absolutely. Okay, it's absolutely genius, absolutely genius. You know, born to add, it's just so fabulous stuff. Okay, so uh, the, that's the good part. The bad part is almost through the whole day so far, I felt somewhat like a platypus. Um, I, I felt like I was from an entirely different gene pool than everybody in this room. Um, I was in the fourth grade too. Uh, I didn't slump, I did well, so they put me in a fifth grade class. When I got there, they had already handed out the books for the, it's a big table of books from the library, and they are, people had already taken their book of choice to do book reports. Only one book was left. It was called Paradise Lost. So, so, so I read all of Paradise Lost in the fifth grade as a 10-year-old. Um, and they, it was OK. I went on to uh, Paradise Regained, the Samson Agonistes. It was OK. But, but you don't have to slump. All it took was uh, curiosity, really. So I, I just I don't understand that. So rather than think of education as a process that's sort of like the Special Olympics, I want to talk to you about education as a process like the real Olympics. What regular people do, what extraordinary people do, as they understand the world around them and share it with all their friends and those they don't know yet. So I'm going to talk you through that. And just to give you a sense of this, while we've been here today, since breakfast, 125 million different people have come to Google to do this. Okay? So, so just to give you a sense of this, okay. So this is my planet. Uh, it's Earth. I'm going to talk you through the kind of things I like doing on my laptop computer. I like zooming into Africa and seeing herds of wild elephants roaming. Okay? I also like going to the Great Pyramids because I've read about them and I wonder how they're lined up. I've heard of the Sphinx. I have to go see that. All these markers are pictures people have taken. If I click on those, I can see them. Every blue marker you see, oh, that, that ring, those are stories about Cairo. If I click on that, I can see the paragraph that mentions Cairo in over two million books. Okay? If I go to to Greece, I can see the Acropolis and the Parthenon, and I can see the actual buildings. I can walk through them. <coughs> if I learn that the Parthenon is made from pentelic marble, from, from Mount Pentelicon, that's where the mar marble was, was, was mined. Okay? We can go to Rome, we can visit the Pope, and we can actually see the Sistine Chapel to see where the roof is, right in the middle of the screen. We could also pop over and take a look at the Colosseum and have some sense of what Daniel faced. <coughs> that's where uh, Ben-Hur rode around on his chariot right there at the Circus Maximus. I can go here and see the carcer in the brown there. That was, that, that was the first jail that gave us the word incarcerate. Okay? I can also show you books about London or, 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 or um, Paris. You can see the Eiffel Tower. And if you think of the Eiffel Tower, you can't help but think of the Tokyo Tower because Godzilla kept destroying it. And every time they make a new movie, they would rebuild it. So there it is. We can also go see all the buildings in Tokyo, including where the carp and the ham fighters fight, play baseball. Hello Kitty is the carp's mascot. And uh, Hello Kitty was actually born in London. So all these stories in London, we can go see the Queen and the changing of the guards. All those pictures would show us stories. Over 50 million things people have posted on Google Earth. That's the Old Globe Theater. I can see how the seating arrangement was. Those are the clouds as of 15 minutes ago. That's where the prisoner number six lived in, in, in the TV show The Prisoner. <laughs> Wanted to break him out one day. He's my kind of guy. That's the Book of Kells is right in the middle there. That's where it really is. It's a real thing. And you can go see it, and you can click on that and read the Book of Kells online. You could also go to Interlock and, and do the Jungfraujach and go tour that up from Kleine Scheidig. There's stories from, from the, this is Mount Everest, and all those little markers, those were from the United Nations and the European Satellite Agency and NASA, pictures from, from space. Here we can pop over and see the Taj Mahal at Agra, and we can actually walk through the building. We could learn that the grandfather of the builder of the Taj Mahal Shah Jahan was built a, a tomb for his wife too. That was called Humayun's tomb. So um, we can Michael, yes. Can you see if my wife took in the recycling today? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's yep. Friday, and I, and I think that it's time to take it in. <laughs> we just had a, uh, a, a stop here. Yeah. I didn't mean to break it, Michael. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I broke Google Earth. That's no, it's okay. So this is Frank, Franklin Wright's home in, 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 in office there in Oak Park. We can go down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, which most people don't get to do. 
So now we've done that a little bit. We can also, you don't get sick, I know you had lunch, but we can go over to San Francisco, we can see the, where the San Francisco Giants play. We can also fly back over to the Moscone Center. I don't know if you've been there. That's SF MoMA on the left there, the Moscone Center. You see all the buildings are 3D. We can fly over and see the Transamerica Pyramid. This is something you can do on a battery-powered laptop computer, okay? The, this is the San Francisco Bay Area. Those books are all about those cities, like Oakland and so forth. We can also come back over here and see what's going on in New York. For example, lots of books. Lots of New York Times stories. New York Times publishes all their news stories on Google Earth, geocoded to the location. We can go look at the Solomon Guggenheim Museum, built by Frank Lloyd Wright. We can pop over here and see the uh, sort of uh, international architecture style. We can also pop out into space, and we notice that space is very rich. We can hit a button, and we can see space itself. We can zoom in to over 200 million galaxies and 100 million stars. We can see galaxies in collision that are being torn apart. We can pop around and see the deepest objects ever photographed in space. That's gravitational lensing showing objects on the other side of the center of the universe. Okay, that's why they're distorted like that. You see giant nebula, it's the cone nebula. And these are all the Hubble pictures in context of all the known uh, astronomy photographs. We can see globular clusters. There's 150,000 uh, stars as large as our sun. Smaller than a galaxy, just a little, little dust spot over there. Then we can see this. This is a picture of lots of galaxies. But when you zoom in, all those stars that you see, they're not really stars at all. They're galaxies too. So that's the kind of thing that 100 million, million people are doing every day. They're not waiting for you to do research. They're not waiting for you to beg for money from some government agency. They're not waiting for you to decide how they should be educated. They're educating themselves. They're, now, they may not, now, like, like the Wikipedia, they may not be doing it perfectly, but they're doing it. So I, I think your challenge is to harness what's happening, not to direct what should happen. And I urge you to think that way. And I found out I'm not a platypus after you all, all because one of the previous speakers actually is in the same uh, gene pool as me. Thank you. Thank you.